Welcome back to Book Break. In this video I'm going to be recommending you books based on your favourite TV shows of the last year. And over the last year there have been so many massive TV moments, so we've got a lot of recommendations here. It's going to be quite a long video I think, but if you look in the progress bar below I have divided it up into sections so you can scroll through to find your favourite TV shows of the last year and then hear book suggestions specially for you. Let's get started with Bridgerton because that is just absolutely massive at the moment and Bridgerton is based on a book series so a great place to start would be reading the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. These are books from the early 2000s but there is obviously a huge amount of renewed interest in them now. They're basically Gossip Girl meets Jane Austen. They are Regency period dramas and romances with an anonymous source called Lady Whistledown who reports on all the gossip she hears. There are eight books in the series as well as a few bonus epilogues so there's a lot to read there. You could also read the Gossip Girl series by Cecily von Ziegesser. These books came out at the same time and had a similar premise except that the Gossip Girl books are set in modern day. So this time the action is taking place at a high school and Gossip Girl is a blog that reports on all of the secrets and scandals of the teenagers in the Upper East Side. You could of course also read the Jane Austen books. So I have got my complete Macmillan Collectors Library collection here all six finished Jane Austen novels as well as this which is a collection of her other writings. Jane Austen is an obvious match for fans of Bridgerton. All of these are wonderfully funny and romantic stories set in Regency Britain. I just adore them and if you like Bridgerton I think you will too. Or if you loved Bridgerton for its historical setting but being written with our more modern values in mind then The Other Bennet Sister by Janice Hadlow will be so up your alley. So this is a retelling of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice from the perspective of Mary Bennet, the least loved middle sister. In the first half it retells the events of Pride and Prejudice, so if you're familiar with that story the first half will be very recognisable to you but given a whole new twist. And then the book takes Mary Bennet off for her own brand new adventure and this is really feminist and empowering and fun. It reads like a Jane Austen book, you could almost believe that Jane Austen herself had written it but with more of our modern views and values. If you really appreciated seeing a more diverse Regency Britain in Bridgerton than we usually see in period dramas and which we know from reading David Olasoga's Black and British is not actually anachronistic then you will love Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho and this one has magic in it which was missing from Bridgerton. This is about a sorcerer called Zacharias who becomes England's first African sorcerer royal so his job is keeping England's magic levels stable and it's also about an orphan called Prunella who stumbles across England's biggest magical discovery in decades. Or we can go a little further back in time to the 1780s for Daughters of Night by Laura Shepard Robinson. This is a feminist historical fiction mystery about a woman who sets out to solve the murder of a woman who London society would rather ignore. So this is all about her taking back control and seeking justice and this book comes out in February so get those pre-orders in for this very exciting page turning mystery. Or just one more recommendation for Bridgerton fans, if it's the historical romance that you loved the most why not try something like Beverly Jenkins's historical romances. So Breathless for example is set in the Old West and it's about a beautiful woman nicknamed the Duchess who reconnects with a handsome drifter from her past. <laughs> Next let's talk about The Queen's Gambit. I was absolutely obsessed with this show and it is also based on a book by Walter Tevis so that book is a great place to start. The book and the show are pretty similar in terms of plot. The book does dive more into the sexism that Beth faces in the very male world of chess and a few of the characters are subtly different in a few small ways but overall it's a pretty obvious next book to pick up. And then I think you'll also love The One Man by Andrew Gross. This is a very high stakes historical thriller set during the Second World War and it's about a rescue mission to smuggle a scientist out of Auschwitz and it's also about his relationship with a chess playing genius. So from this you'll get more of that sense of awe that a lot of us felt from watching Beth Harmon at work, watching this boy and his incredible memory when it comes to a chessboard. 
Chess Bitch by Jennifer Shahadi is a non-fiction about female chess players and it's got all of these interviews and profiles of incredible female chess players including the Polgar sisters who refused to play in separate women's tournaments and it's this amazing look at why chess is such a male dominated world and the women who are shaking that up. Another similar non-fiction book is The Queen of Cartway by Tim Crothers. This tells the amazing story of chess prodigy Fiona Mutesi, who grew up in one of the worst slums in Uganda and went on to be one of the best chess players in the world. Or for a book about a different game, The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan is about a group of four Chinese immigrant families living in San Francisco who set up a club playing Mahjong. And the book is kind of structured like the game of Mahjong, so you get really immersed into how the game works. So if the Queen's Gambit had you rushing out to buy a chess board, then the Joy Luck Club will probably have you rushing out to buy a Mahjong set. Back in March, when the world was first going into lockdown, everyone stayed at home to fall in love with Marianne and Connell from Normal People. So of course a great place to start would be to read the book Normal People by Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney has just completely set the publishing world alight with her books Normal People and Conversations with Friends and there is another book coming out at the end of this year so everyone is very excited about that. But if you are one of the many people who fell head over heels for Marianne and Connell, this is where their story begins. A book coming out later this year, so keep an eye out for it, that's getting a lot of comparisons to normal people is How to Save a Life by Eva Carter. So this one is about three friends. It begins at a New Year's party on the eve of the millennium. One of the boys, Joel, at this party his heart stops beating and so another girl from the party, Kerry, performs CPR on him and actually manages to save his life. Whereas her best friend Tim, who is also like her training to be a doctor, completely freezes up and is unable to help. And the book then follows those three characters over the next few decades and sees how this event massively impacted the course of their lives. And just like in Normal People, these characters keep being drawn back together. If it's the Irish setting that you loved, you should read Tender by Belinda McKean. This is about two university students, Catherine and James, who form this very intense friendship that means something very different to each of them. James is gay, and in 1990s Dublin, he doesn't feel able to be himself. Catherine is obsessively in love with him and unable to let him go. One Day by David Nichols is a very Normal People-esque story. Again, we have two friends who meet at university and we follow them over the course of their lives, checking in on them on the same day each year and seeing where their lives have brought them to in that time. And again, we just keep seeing them being drawn back together and thrown apart and it's heartbreaking. If you related the most to the character of Marianne and her constant struggle to understand herself, then the protagonist Queenie from the book Queenie by Candace Carty-Williams is the perfect character to read next. This book has the same very honest writing style as normal people, but it's also about race in Britain, what it means to be Jamaican and British, and how the people around you will treat you. And finally, Ordinary People by Diana Evans is similar not just because of the title, but also because of its exploration of complicated relationships. So this one is set in the late 2000s. It's set against the backdrop of Obama's first election victory. But thousands of miles away in South London, two couples find themselves on the brink of change. So this book explores the experience of being black or mixed race during this uniquely hopeful time, but also the political context feels a million miles away from these ordinary people having ordinary problems. Another early lockdown phenomenon was Tiger King, and that was just a celebration of the completely bizarre. So the first book I'm going to recommend you is Gotta Get Through This by Louis Theroux. It's not about jungle cats, but if the main attraction of Tiger King for you was the larger than life characters, then Louis Theroux has got plenty of stories for you. So this book takes you along the journey of his incredible career, and we get to hear more about the very eccentric characters that he has worked with, as well as learning more about the man himself. But if it really is jungle cats that you're into, then a perfect classic for you would be Born Free. This is the story, in her own words, of Joy Adamson, the woman who rescued the now world famous lion cub Elsa and raised her until she was old enough to fend for herself. At which point Joy Adamson had to make the really difficult decision that as Elsa was born free, she should live free. 
So it's a very sweet story. You get to follow along with their incredible bond and learn about this woman who really did walk with lions. Or a perfect comparison to Tiger King would be The Lizard King. This is a book by Brian Christie and it's the true story of a father and son whose main business was smuggling reptiles. And it's a very dangerous world that Brian Christie got mixed up in while trying to tell this story. As well as learning about this father and son, the book is also about the federal agent who tried to take them down. And it's been described as The Sopranos with snakes. Reese Witherspoon produced and starred in an incredible adaptation of Little Fires Everywhere, which is a book by Celeste Ng. This is a wonderful, very multi-layered story. It's about a conflict between various families living in this little suburb called Shaker Heights, which is a planned community where everything is seemingly perfect. What we know from the beginning is that this is going to end in disaster. Both the book and the TV series show as their first scene one of the family's homes being burnt to the ground. If what you loved about this book and this show was the claustrophobia of the small town setting, we actually have a whole video that we made on books set in small towns, so I will link to that below, but I'll give you one really good example from that video. This is Big Lies in a Small Town by Diane Chamberlain. It's set between two time periods of the same small town called Edenton between the 1940s and present day. And the secrets that this town holds are all hidden in the town mural which in present day our main character is uncovering. As it says on the front cover, this community has a lot to hide. If what you loved so much about Little Fires Everywhere was the complicated families and the race dynamics that can exist in small communities, then the next book you should read is The House of Deep Water by Jenny McFarland. This one is about three women who grew up in the small town of Riverbend, Michigan, and couldn't wait to leave but now, each for their own reasons, are returning. So this has got lots of mother-daughter relationships, it's this town with plenty of secrets and scandal to hide, and it's a story of love and loss and starting again. So all of the elements that you loved from Little Fires Everywhere. Euphoria has been a super popular teen drama about a group of troubled high school students. It's like skins for the new generation. So a perfect book for Euphoria fans would be Kings, Queens and Inbetweens by Tanya Boteju. This one is about a teenager called Nima who is pretty bored of her small community until she discovers the local drag scene. So it's this really sweet, heartwarming, sometimes messy story about Nima learning to love and express herself and the friends and relationships that she makes along the way. Then there's The Revolution of Birdie Randolph by Brandy Colbert. Just like Euphoria, this is a perfect combination of some really sweet, heartwarming moments with some really hard-hitting, nuanced explorations of the very real troubles faced by many teenagers. The book is about Birdie, a teenager who's always had to work really, really hard to be the perfect daughter that her parents always wanted. It's about her aunt, Carleen, who has come to stay with the family after years in and out of drug addiction and it's about Birdie's love interest, Booker, who is a very sweet boy with a troubled past that she knows her parents would never approve of. Or if you want to go to even darker territory and step away from YA, there's Marlena by Julie Bunton. This is about an obsessive friendship between two teenage girls that ends within a year with one of them dead. Years later, the surviving girl looks back on this year and finds herself still haunted by the memories of what happened. And talking of haunting, The Haunting of Bly Manor has been a massive show recently and it's actually based on this classic gothic novella, The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, which is about a governess who goes to work for a new family and becomes convinced that the grounds are haunted. And it's really famous for its ambiguity. Whether the house really is haunted is up for the reader's interpretation. The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware is another retelling of this same story, which shows just how well this story has held up through the years that it spawned so many new versions. So the turn of the key begins with our main character in jail for the murder of one of the children that she worked as a nanny for. 
She starts writing letters to her lawyer explaining all of the events that led up to this and again it relies on the same very creepy ambiguity of whether or not the place really was haunted. Or if your favourite thing about the haunting of Bly Manor wasn't just the gothic haunted house setting but also the love story between two women then you should definitely read The Animals at Lockwood Manor by Jane Healy. This book is set during the Second World War and it's about a woman called Hetty who is tasked with overseeing the evacuation of the mammal collection from the Natural History Museum where she works to safety, away from the threat of the Blitz. They're going to be stored in this grand manor house in the countryside. But of course when she gets there strange things begin to happen. Again it is unclear if the house is or isn't haunted but the animals do seem to be moving in the night. But amongst all the creepiness Hetty does meet the woman who lives at the manor, Lucy. A very troubled young woman who does seem to be haunted by something but against the backdrop of all this fear we get this beautiful love story between these two women. Another show that's been huge this past year is The Crown. It's been very popular for all four seasons but there was a lot of extra interest in this most recent season's focus on Princess Diana. So if that's what caught your attention then an obvious next book you might want to read is The Biography of Diana by Andrew Morton where you get to hear a lot of the story in Diana's own words. For a fictional book set in the same time period, I recommend The Talk of Pramtown by Joanna Naden. So the royal wedding between Charles and Diana forms the backdrop of this story, but it's actually about a woman living in Essex who hasn't seen her daughter since she left home pregnant and disgraced, aged 17, and now, 11 years later, our main character receives a phone call. Something terrible has happened and she has to go and pick up the granddaughter that she's never met. If you just liked the royal setting and the drama but you don't need it to be based on real history then a really fun fictional royal story is Royal by Danielle Steele. This is about a princess who is sent away from home during the war to keep her safe and she ends up falling in love. And then the story spans through the decades all the way to the 1970s when an orphan discovers a stack of hidden letters and finds out her true identity and a long lost princess emerges. And finally, if it's royal weddings that are your favourite, whether it's Charles and Diana or Harry and Meghan, Royal Wedding is actually the final book in the Princess Diaries series by Meg Cabot. This is a really, really fun book series and some great movies as well about a teenager called Mia who finds out that she is actually the princess of a country called Genovia. In this book, Royal Wedding, Mia is now 26 years old, all sorts of drama happens, but I don't think it's a spoiler giving the title to say that the book ends with a royal wedding. At the beginning of last year, which now feels like a million years ago, the world was watching Cheer, a docu-series about a cheerleading team from Texas. So if you're missing that, I've got some more recommendations, starting with Dare Me by Megan Abbott, which actually had its own TV series this year. There have been a lot of big cheerleading moments in the last year, so this is about a new coach that comes to take charge of this high school's cheerleading squad, tearing allegiances apart and turning the girls into rivals. So everyone here is playing their own deadly game. This is very much the dark side of cheerleading. Another murderous side to cheerleading shows up in The Cheerleaders by Cara Thomas. This book is a YA mystery. It's set five years after the death of five cheerleaders in this small town prompted the school to disband the cheerleading squad. But five years later, there are still secrets in this town and our main character, Monica, is somehow at the center of them all. But if it was the true stories that you liked and getting a real glimpse into life on a cheerleading squad, then a really interesting perspective is in the book The Color of My Skin by Kiki Bazile. She was one of the first black cheerleaders on her school's varsity squad and so the book is a really interesting exploration of the institutional racism that she faced. Finally, the show that made everyone smile over the last year, Shit's Creek. And if you're a fan, you will recognise the reference on my t-shirt. Again, this is a show that has been around for a while and has had a really strong cult following for years, but in 2020, the rest of the world finally caught up and took notice just in time for the show to end and everyone to go into collective mourning about it. So if you want a book that will give you similar vibes, The Family Fang by Kevin Wilson is about a family of performance artists and the two grown up children 
trying to adjust to any kind of normal life. So it's got this really eccentric cast of characters that makes it a sort of blend of Schitt's Creek with Arrested Development, the kind of characters that you love to hate and love to be continually confused by. A book that's more closely aligned to the Schitt's Creek plot is The Wangs vs. The World by Jade Chang. This is about a wealthy Chinese immigrant family who had it all and then go bankrupt. So they have to set off on this road trip, leaving behind their Bel Air mansion and going to Hideaway in New York. So very familiar premise here and just as funny and charming. Or for a plot that goes the other way around, you could read The Windfall by Diksha Basu. This is about the Jar family in India who suddenly come into a lot of money. And so the whole family relocate to one of Delhi's most glamorous neighborhoods. So while it is the other way around from Schitt's Creek, you get a lot of the same fish out of water themes. Essentially, it's a book about a family suddenly finding themselves in a very unfamiliar situation and all of the hilarity that ensues. So if I didn't mention your favorite TV show of the last year, do leave a comment below and I will do my best to recommend you a book based on that one. I will also leave a link here to a video we made before on thrillers that we think would make particularly good TV shows. So hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of those on our screens soon. See you next time.